In my previous video, I reinstalled the window regulators in both of the doors on my 1966 Dodge Charger. In this video, I'll finish reassembling the doors. Here's a before picture of the driver's side. Both door panels were in decent shape, but had some minor issues. The carpet was faded and dirty. The lower edge of each door was chipped from the seatbelt buckles. And a previous owner cut holes in the door panels to install a pair of aftermarket speakers. In addition to patching the speaker holes, I needed to re-straighten the panel boards, which had become a little wavy from moisture damage. I softened them with 70% isopropyl alcohol, then clamped them for days. With the door panels removed from the car, I first sanded and repainted the bottom door reveals with Rust-Oleum automotive paint. After cleaning the inner surfaces of both doors, I checked the condition of the factory soundproofing. If you look closely, you can see two shades of gray. It's darker above this line and lighter below. This is a result of the factory's seven-step dip and spray rust protection process, which was a fairly new concept at the time. Anyway, having determined that the factory coating was still in good shape, I chose not to apply any Dynamat to this outer skin. However, there were areas on the inner sheet metal that I thought might benefit from some sound dampening material. I measured and cut several pieces of Dynamat and applied them to the insides of both doors. The next thing to install was the plastic vapor barrier. The original material was in fair shape, but I opted to replace it with new 6 mil polyethylene. I used 3M strip caulk to bond the vapor barrier to the door, much like it was done at the factory. Besides being a little sticky, the butyl rubber caulk is easy to work with. You simply press it into place wherever you need it. The warmth of your hands quickly softens the strip caulk, making it pliable enough to follow any contour. I first laid a strip of caulk around the perimeter of the door panel area. There was factory caulk around the door release handle, so I made sure to reproduce that seal. I also sealed around the window crank opening for good measure, even though the factory didn't appear to apply any putty there. With the strip caulk in place, the new vapor barrier could be installed. I loosely attached the plastic sheeting before making relief cuts around the window crank and door release so that I could relax the wrinkles they were causing in the material. I also trimmed off the excess plastic around the door release. The Dynamite roller came in handy for removing air gaps between the caulk and the vapor barrier. If you need to adjust the position of the vapor barrier, that's no problem. 
the plastic sheeting easily pulls away from the caulk and can be repositioned any number of times. You can also tell when the caulk and the vapor barrier are well bonded because the strip caulk shows through the plastic as a solid black line. Next I notched out around the panel clip holes and trimmed off all excess material. Finally, I used a screwdriver to tuck the bottom edge of the vapor barrier into the door. Off camera, I glued on new carpeted inserts, cleaned and reinstalled the panel clips, and polished and reattached the stainless steel trim. Before the panel could go back on the door, I made sure to take out the small screw under the vent window. I also had to remove the door lock knob. And I needed to get the window out of the way by rolling it down. I started reinstalling the door panel by feeding the door lock post through its hole in the panel. I wish I had set up a second camera so you could see what I'm doing here. But basically it involves these steel clips that attach to the stainless steel trim, then have to pass through holes in the top edge of the door panel before snapping into holes in the door's sheet metal. This older video clip helps explain. Those holes have to line up because there's a strip of chrome. This trim piece goes along and the five clips go through the panel and into this black sill this metal piece uh, so I got to get the holes lined up so that's what you see me doing here with the needle nose pliers once I got the trim clips aligned with their respective holes I fully seated each one by gently pounding it in with the heel of my hand next I put the little screw back in its hole under the vent window With the top edge of the door panel firmly attached, I carefully aligned and seated the remaining clips along the other three edges. The next thing to install was the armrest. 
two long screws pass through both the black armrest and its chromed plastic bezel and thread into two of these speed nut clips in the middle of the door. The screws need to thread in at an upward angle, about 30 degrees above horizontal. I went back and forth, gradually tightening each screw a little at a time while monitoring the position of the armrest. This also helped prevent cracking the plastic bezel. It's easiest to start threading the machine screw while the handle is in its closed position. Once the screw is part way in, you can pull the handle open to finish tightening it all the way. For the window crank, we need the black plastic spacer, the chrome bezel, and the chrome handle. With the window at its up position, I want the handle pointing toward the armrest. These are fastened to the regulator shaft with the chrome socket head screw, which takes a 532nd hex key. After wiping down the door panel with Lucas Slick Mist Interior Detailer, the only thing left to do was reinstall the door lock knob. The driver's door is done. Here's a high speed recap of the same process on the passenger side. First, clean the inner surface of the door. Then measure, cut, and install Dynamat. Apply 3M strip caulk. Install the vapor barrier.
roll down the window, remove the little screw below the vent window, and remove the door lock knob. Hang the door panel starting with the door lock post. Then line up the trim clips with their mounting holes and gently pound them until seated. Reinstall the little screw under the vent window. Carefully line up the panel clips with their respective holes and gently pound them into place. Attach the armrest. Reinstall the door release handle. With the window in its up position, reattach the window crank handle in your desired orientation. Reinstall the door lock knob. Tidy up. All done. Thanks for watching.